Hello fellow Scratchers, I'm Griff Patch and welcome back to part 18 of our tile scrolling series, probably soon to be rebranded as our How to Code Super Mario Advance 4 in Scratch series. <laughs> Today we finally will be adding Mario. What? You think we added them a long time back? Well, kinda, yeah. But there's a difference between Mario and Super Mario. Super Mario is of course the big Mario player, while Mario, well, he's the little tiny guy we start out with. So today we add Mini Mario. Yay, long time coming, right? In doing so, we will introduce the power-up mechanic from Mushrooms for this epic transformation into Super Mario. And of course, his power down when he gets caught by an enemy. This is really fun to have and makes the game so cool. For this, we will of course need some new costumes. So do head over to the starter asset project linked under this video. Take a look in the Mario sprite costumes and scroll down. There, costumes 11 and onwards are the new mini Mario costumes. If I zoom in, yeah, there he is. Just open your backpack and drop the entire Mario sprite in there. Great. Okay, so open your tile scrolling projects from part 17. To prevent us losing any work, make sure to save it as a copy. And once Scratch has stopped whirring, we can name it part 18. Yay, guys, let's get scratching. We'll begin by bringing in those new costumes. Open your backpack again and drag the Mario sprite into this project. Now we have the Mario 2 sprite. We want to find the Mini Walk 1 costume number 11. And then one by one, we'll drag them into the official Mario sprite, like this, all the way up to costume 19. Super! Before we delete the Mario 2 sprite, just click into the Mario and ensure we have all 19 costumes in there. Yep, so delete Mario 2. Before we make use of any of these costumes, let me just explain how they are set up. It's important to realise I don't just chuck these costumes into Scratch. But they are very purposefully positioned and aligned to work just right. Here is the big Super Mario costume. If I leave a copy on the screen so that you can see how things line up, then I'll switch to the Mini Mario. Now see how his feet are perfectly aligned with Super Mario? This ensures as we switch between costumes, we still have his feet on the floor. Now we could have done this a very different way by centering Mario vertically and changing the height variable, but as you will see, this way turns out a lot less complicated. Now the walk animation of Mini Mario is just two frames, rather than Super Mario's four. To simplify our code, I have therefore duplicated up the two Mini Mario walking costumes to make it a four frame walk cycle too. Now did you notice the names of these costumes is very specific? All the Super Mario costumes begin with Mario, and the Mini Mario ones begin with Mini. Other than that, what follows is the same. Walk one, turn, jump. This will make coding up the animations much easier. You'll see in a moment. Oh, and then there's this last costume, Mario Transform. This one is a mid-height Mario between the Mini and the Super Mario. We'll use this to add a little pizzazz to our power-up and down animations. So are you ready? Our coding begins in the Super Mario sprite. Find with me the Define Paint Sprite custom block. Now I'm using Scratch add-ons quite heavily in this tutorial to find my way around. When the project gets as big and complicated as this one, it becomes a lifesaver. So this script sets Mario's costume based on their current action. You can see all the Switch costume names are Mario this and Mario that. Well, that's useful because now we have a new set of mini Mario costumes that all start mini this and mini that. Let's make it so that we can quickly switch between the two costume sets. Start by making a new variable, naming it Mario for all sprites. Now set it to Mario. Oh dear. Scratch is still only showing half my block as I drag it around. I hope that gets fixed soon. Hmm. Duplicate that, and this time set it to Mini. That's our new costume set name. So bring in a join. So where we are switching costume here to Mario Crouch, we can join our Mario variable with the word Crouch to give us the full name Mario Crouch. We just need to make absolutely sure we have written this without any typos, and even the capital letters must be the same 
otherwise this will not work. Once we are sure, we can drop it into the switch costume like so. Now we work our way down each of these switch costume blocks, duplicating the join block and entering the corresponding costume action. Mario death, Mario jump, Mario walk three, Mario turn. Ah, now, this walk animation is not quite so straightforward. We don't use a name here, but the number one. Hmm. No problem though, start by adding a new switch costume above it, and oh yeah, this is where we start with Mario Walk 1. Now, we replace this like the others with a join Mario with Walk 1. Then, when we had a 1 here below, we replace that with the current costume number block since that will now be the number of the first walk costume. Great, it's time to give that a test. Assuming that Mario variable is still set to Mario with a capital M, our costumes should look like they have for the last 16 episodes or so. Okay, not so exciting, but very cool that it is indeed looking correct. But now for some fun, click the set Mario to mini block. And pow, did you see that? We instantly switched over to the mini Mario costume set. That's awesome! Oh, it's so refreshing to see him looking like this. And there's his original Losing Life costume. Yes! And of course, we can just click on the blocks to switch back and forward between Mario and Super Mario. How cool is that? And so easy to do just by being careful with how we named the costumes. Do you see how this could be extended to add even more types of Mario later on if we wanted? Yeah, I bet you did. So tell me, since Mini Mario is so small, what happens when we crouch? Oh no, what's this? Oh, the dreaded purple square invasion has begun. It's been a long time since we had one of these. If you remember, this occurs when we try to set Mario to a costume that does not exist, and in this case, it's the Mini Mario Crouch costume. Yeah, Mini Mario cannot in fact crouch, and that is why there is no costume for this. We need to prevent crouching for Mini Mario then. So find the Define Handle Keys Jump Crouch script. Here is where we are handling the key down for crouching. Add in an AND, and a Mario is not equal. Mario is not equal to mini. If I run the project now, I can confirm that I'm smashing the down key and Mario is not crouching. And yeah, there's no more purple square. Thank goodness for that. I didn't like that purple square one bit. But talking of crouching, let me find those set Mario blocks. Where'd they go? Uh, here they are. Now clicking back into Mario, we can test that we are still able to crouch. And yep, we can still crouch and slide. Brilliant. But that does pose the question. Switch back to mini Mario. And if I try to walk under this block, I should be able to fit, but ah, no, we are blocked by an invisible force. And of course we are because for all the costume switching we have done, we have not addressed the actual height of Mario in the game engine where he's treated as full height still. So back in the code. Find with me the define fix collision in direction dxdy script. This is where we are looking at six possible collision points on Mario. Notice how when Mario crouches, we are already excluding the top two points. This reduces his height to just one block high. Well, that sounds perfect for mini Mario, right? So add an or inside this knot, and we'll only check these two upper collision points when we are not crouching or when Mario equals mini. Nice. Let's give that a test, shall we? I'll try running under the platform. Yes, that's no problem at all. So what about the mystery blocks? Just check I can still trigger them. Yep, yeah, that's brilliant. And it means we have a mushroom to collect. And you all know what that means. Yes, now we need to add the power up feature to make Mario transform into Super Mario. 
For this, we need to click into the enemy sprite, since this is where the mushroom sprite lives. Find the define tick life script. This takes care of the mushroom sprite. And scrolling down a bit, here is where we detect Mario picking it up. Let's broadcast a new message. Naming it collect one up. We can use this to trigger the action on the Mario sprite in a moment, but first we need some new sounds. Do you still have the sound sprite in your project? If not, you'll find it in the asset project still. Sound number 19 is named power up. Listen to this. And power down. Okay, copy these two sounds into the Mario sprite. And then click back into the Mario sprite, confirm they are there, and then to the code. So this power up action works very much like the Mario lose life script here in that while the action is taking place, the entire game needs to pause. This is to stop the enemies walking around and killing you while you upgrade. Begin by making a new when I receive collect one up block. Now this doesn't want to do anything if we are already Super Mario. So if not Mario equals mini, just stop this script. Otherwise, great, we start the iconic power up sound. And for starters, just set Mario to Mario. Make sure to use the correct capital letters there for it to work. And we can run the project. Here we go. Are you ready for this? I'm excited. Woohoo! We have upgraded. This is so cool. Okay, uh, perhaps I'm overplaying this. We still need to pause the game and show the actual transition animation. Firstly, to pause the game loop, bring in a stop other scripts in this sprite and do that right after the first if. Now, we won't set Mario to Super Mario right away, so move that down here for later. Okay, next up, we need to wait for zero seconds. Now, why is that? Well, although we used a stop all scripts in Sprite, we have to wait one more game tick to allow all the other queued up event receivers scripts in the other sprites to finish running. Otherwise, things will get out of order and all sorts of badness will creep in. Try without it if you wish and you'll see what I mean. So we switch our costume to the transitional costume, Mario Transform. So we want to show this costume for two game frames. Now, while the game is paused, we still want the main game tiles to animate. So add a repeat to and broadcast position tiles. This won't allow any enemies to move, but it will keep the tile costumes animating. Now to switch to the next costume, duplicate the blocks above and switch to Mario Walk 1. That's the big Mario costume. I think we'll do this for three frames rather than two though, but see what you prefer. Right, before we can test this, we need to set Mario back to mini, that is mini Mario. Click that to set the variables and then click the event to see the animation. Oh wow, that was short. We got a little bob out of him, but nothing more. We need to loop this around a few times. Repeat three times and pop the two set costume scripts in here. Then return the whole thing back under the wait zero block. Set us back to the mini Mario and click the event receiver again to test it. Right, so this is just half the animation. We currently switch between middle sized and Super Mario. We also need to do the same for mini to middle sized Mario. In which case, let's make a new custom block, naming it loop transformation. But make sure not to tick the run without screen refresh. Why? Because we want to play an animation in here that lasts more than one game frame. Put the entire repeat loop in there, and as normal, We'll then use this block where we took the scripts from. Then, once the first animation is complete, we finally set Mario to Mario, that is Big Mario, and use the loop transformation block once more. All we need to change is which costume we are switching to. And of course, we can use a join block. With the walk one on the right, and put the variable Mario on the left. 
This should now toggle between Mini Mario and Transforming Mario. Then Full Size Mario and Transforming Mario. Let me just set Mario back to Mini before we can test it. And here we go. And oh yeah, I am liking that. We have a very pleasant transformation there. So what's left to do? Ah, since we stopped the main game loop before playing this animation, we need a way to kick it off again. Broadcast a new message of level continue game loop. We can't use any existing receivers as they tend to initiate enemies, etc. And we don't want any of that. If we scroll to our main game loop script, we can introduce the new when I receive level continue game loop. Just here. Just like the other scripts, we kick off the game loop custom block. Now hold on. See how we are setting coins to zero when the game loop begins? Well, that's no good anymore as it would happen when we collect a power up. So take it out and we'll move it into the level start game loop, but not our continue game loop. But also there's another one. Where is it? Here we are, level start game loop, respawn. This one also needs a set coins to zero before the game loop begins. Great. Now just one more change before we test this baby out. Find the define reset player script and we need to set Mario to mini. Down at the bottom. Yeah. And with that, we are ready to test once more. Here we go. Now I'm even more excited to see the full classic transformation take place. Are you? And oh yes, now that's what I'm talking about. If you got this far, then I bet you are celebrating too, because this is just too cool. Well then, they say what comes up must come down. So look, when we now contact an enemy, we are still launching into the lose life animation. But when in Super Mario mode, this is no longer how things should work. By being Super Mario, we should get a second chance. That is, we should shrink back to Mini Mario and continue from there. Now this is a little bit more tricky because it's not always the case. For example, dropping off the bottom of the screen is fatal no matter how big you are. So we need to differentiate between different ways you can get hurt. Click into the enemy sprite. We need to locate all the places where we broadcast Mario Lose Life. If you have my DevTools extension or Scratch add-ons installed, then that comes in really useful here. I'm looking up the Lose Life event. Okay, here is one. It's in the Tick Goomba script. We're going to change it to a new event, naming it Mario Hurt. Okay, the next one is Tick Piranha. Change it to Mario Hurt. Tick shell. Again, change it to Mario Hurt. And that looks like it. Good. So back into the Mario sprite we go. And look for the when I receive Mario lose life script. Well, saying that, we aren't actually going to do anything with that, but we are going to make a new when I receive Mario Hurt script to work alongside it. Firstly, if we are hurt and we are mini Mario, that is Mario equals mini, then we can simply defer to the lose life script by broadcasting Mario lose life. And then stop this script. But otherwise, we want to play a new power down animation. So as before, we stop other scripts in this sprite and then wait for zero seconds again for the other broadcast to end. Loop transformation 
to play the first half of the animation and then set Mario back to mini, capital M, loop transformation again to play the second half of the animation and broadcast level continue game loop. Right, smash that green flag. I think first we should test we can still lose a life as mini Mario. Yes, we can. No problems there. Although I still rather like seeing the correct little Mario sprite when that happens. But now, as big Mario, let's go to our doom. Yes, we shrink. But oh no, what happened? We still died even so. But of course, since the game starts up again, we are still touching the Goomba. So Goomba gets to kill us all over again. And that's it for Mini Mario. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated than it first looked. The secret success here is that when Mario gets hurt, we should become invulnerable for a short amount of time. That is, he should flash a lot and not be able to be hurt just for a moment while and after he shrinks down again. Oh man, but before we move away, I forgot to play the power down sound. Just before we wait here, start the power down sound. Right, let's make a new variable. Yay, call it invulnerable, if you can spell it, and make it for this sprite only. Then just after the wait, set it to around 70 frames should do the trick. That should end up giving us around a second and a half of time. So now, when this Mario Hurt event is triggered, we can add in a new if check and say if invulnerable is greater than zero. Just stop this script. We can't be hurt right now. Notice this doesn't stop us losing a life. Just not being hurt. Now, if we look in the loop transformation script, Notice we always broadcast position tiles even if we are transforming. This is the only receiver that is always broadcast at all times during the game. We can make use of this to make our player flash. When I receive position tiles. If invulnerable is greater than zero, then change invulnerable by minus one. So that will count it back down to zero with each tick of the game. Now we want to flash Mario every other frame. We'll use a mod 2 for that. So if invulnerable mod 2 is less than 1, we can set ghost effect to zero. Now a ghost effect of zero means that the sprite is fully visible. So when invulnerable is an even number, and that includes zero of course, the sprite will be fully visible. But when it's an odd number, we set ghost effect to 99. That's pretty much invisible. Coolio, let's test this. Just powering up and wait for it. Yes, now that was very successful. Did you notice how we began flashing throughout the shrinking animation too? That was exactly as planned. And then the flashing stops and we should be, <laughs> yeah, very vulnerable once more. Superb. Oh man, Goomba, how dare you? And <laughs> not to worry, all good testing, right? Here I come, Goombas. Actually, I've changed my mind. We should go all the way across the level and when we get to the... Yeah, so we're going to try dropping to our death as Big Mario. Okay, nice. We still come to our demise right away as it should be. Hmm. I wonder if it was supposed to switch to the small Mario death sprite there. Drop me a comment if you know. Right. We should make sure this invulnerable variable gets reset at the start of the game. Find the reset player script and we'll set invulnerable to zero after setting Mario to mini. So we are drawing to a close now, but before we do, let's just address one more thing. That mini Mario should not be able to jump quite as high as Super Mario, around one block less, I believe. Find the define handle keys jump and crouch script, 
There's all sorts of ways we could fix this, but the simplest right off the bat is to locate the start sound jump block here. This is where we launch a new jump. Stick in an if right afterwards, checking whether Mario equals mini. Then if it is, quickly set jumping to 3. This skips the first frames of the jump, limiting the maximum height we can reach when in mini Mario mode. Let's just test this out. If I come over here to these mystery blocks and now test how high I can jump. Ok good, so I could headbutt them but I can't jump high enough to get on top. But then, if I collect the mushroom and then come back to the same point, look I can now jump right up above the mystery blocks. Brilliant! And on that bombshell this episode has drawn to an end. Can I ask how your tile based scrolling games are coming along? Are you building a Mario like me or making it all your own? Drop me a comment below and let me know what you're up to. If you enjoyed this video then smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you get notified of the next video as it comes around. If you want to support the channel further then you can become one of my paid members. Then you not only get those cool custom channel emojis but you also get priority replies and comments, early access to videos and even the scratch projects themselves. Wow! Thank you so much for watching and until next time, scratch on guys.